Hello everyone, today we are looking at the PG Nielsen grade, a stray Gundam. And we're going to be asking the question, is this kit as good as a Bandai kit? I mean, honestly, Bandai makes some of the best model kits out there. So can this Nielsen kit actually stack up? We're going to be talking about the pros and cons of buying this kit over buying the official Bandai version. And we're going to be asking questions like, does the price make it too good to be true? And the fact that it has no instructions manual that actually comes with the booklet and that you have to download it, will these things actually affect the overall product? Starting with the aesthetics of the look of this Gunpla kit and compared to the Bandai version, the general look is actually pretty good and from a distance you probably couldn't tell much of the two apart other than of course the giant backpack edition and the four swords on his hips. There are a lot more complex looking parts in some of the back and on the underneath of the legs with this kit and of course it has the addition of this green saber and the green parts are scattered around the legs and on the wing kit. The quality of this kit is actually a bit of a letdown in some areas but it's okay in others once we get to the price section. You may be more accepting of some of these flaws but that's not to say it's all flaws. There are some really good things about it but let's talk about some of the bad things and some of the good things in the quality for this kit. The kit is a lot less sturdy than I had hoped it would be because some of the plastic is just a bit flimsy. Larger parts stay together but other parts seems to fall off a lot it seems like it needs glue in a lot of areas to be honest the stand however is very durable and holds the entire kit up pretty well and i gotta say that's something especially for how heavy this kit is the hands are really cool looking and very flexible the articulation is great on them however they often drop the swords because there's no little slide part to basically hold the sword in place inside the palm of the hand so sometimes those really flexible articulation fingers just happen to drop the heavy swords that come with this kit. The articulation can be limited if you don't glue in the right parts because they will fall apart when you try to move this guy around. Every time you start positioning him to a new pose you're gonna have some trouble with moving those leg joints and some of those arm joints without worrying about if a piece is gonna pop off unless you glue the right parts down. To wrap up this point it just kind of feels fragile without glue in the first place so if you're gonna build this Nielsen kit definitely buy yourself a bottle of glue that will work for model kits. However, all that said, it does come with some pretty cool accessories and it is very flexible once you get all that taken care of. So it comes with the five swords and one shield, basically being five of those katana looking swords and one of the beam swords. How much time did it take me to build this guy? Well, it took me about three full length tables of space and five days of constant work for about three to four hours a day building on this kit. It takes a bit longer to build simply because of the addition of the extra swords, the backpack, and honestly the stand is a bit different than the Bandai stand. New builders should be aware of possible frustrations on building this kit because of all the pieces that you need a bit more skill in shaving parts down that it will take to fit those pieces together. There's a lot of spots on this gunpla where you may just be really unfamiliar with how to put that thing together and I would definitely understand. However, if you've built a PG Gundam before, which is kind of on the opposite spectrum of never building one, of course, is that this one is going to be similar to other PGs, but the plastic and the runners are just of a different quality, and that might actually kill this for some pro builders. Now we are going to get into the size comparison. So we know it's a PG kit, we know that it's a pretty big kit, but how big exactly is this kit? Well, we're gonna put it right next to an HG Sengoku Astray Gundam, one of the smaller Astrays that I have in the collection. Now it's not too pretty, but it serves as a good size comparison as you can see how absolutely massive the Astray Gundam is compared to this tiny Sengoku. Next, we'll be comparing it to this awesome looking clear Barbados Gundam in the MG size. That's a master grade for you right there. And yes, that is a very limited one from the Gundam base. Next up, we'll be comparing him to the big daddy of the Gundams, the Unicorn PG Gundam. Now, the Unicorn is actually quite a large kit, so it's kind of the perfect thing to compare this thing to to feel how large this kit actually is. This kit is pretty wide and large, just like the PG, but as you can see, it's just a smidgen shorter than the PG Unicorn Gundam, but it is still pretty large, enough to look like they can have a duel of 
their own. Now you're probably wondering, well, it's got some cheaper plastic, it's got the size of a PG, it's almost a PG at least, so how much is it? PGs are usually between three and seven hundred dollars on the internet, so how much is this thing? Tell us about the price. The price is about two hundred dollars USD, just about anywhere that you can pick this guy up. Sometimes that price varies a little bit, but they were able to reduce this price by not printing this guy with a manual that comes in the box, which is a printing cost, and not printing any art on the box. Comparing this to the Unicorn at $220 to $260 though, it becomes a bit of a steeper cost as the quality just isn't as nice as the Unicorn, but I gotta say with all PG kits that have built so far, they can be just a bit fragile because of how big they are, and how complicated a lot of these pieces are when putting together. That being said, if you cannot find a unicorn at a really good price, so far this is a really solid priced PG Gundam kit for a beginner to pick up, especially if this is the first PG and you've never gotten to build one, just beware again of all of those fragile parts and needing to trim pieces really well and fit pieces together really well. Now comparing this to other kits that are HG kits or MG kits of between $170-$200 USD, I still think this is worth it if this is your option, like you see something cool, like the Hathaway kit with the other uh, Penelope Gundam versus kits or something like that, and then you also see this PG in the store, I still think the PG would be well worth it to pick up and check out at the $200 price point, even though some of the quality is not nearly as good as a Bandai kit when it comes to putting the stuff together. But with that said, is it as good as a Bandai kit? Well, let's talk about the pros. It's got a better price, it's got the epic size, there's plenty to do for plenty of days once you pick one of these bad boys up. It's got a really, really good look that's very consistent with the original Gunpla Astray. And ironically, funny enough, the original set that this came in was green, but we got the red version. Cons, however, is just that it's cheaper quality parts. You need a lot of extra glue and time to be adding those parts back together and basically fine tuning which pieces are able to move and which pieces need to stay put. And of course, there is no booklet or box art. So if you're a collector, it's definitely not the type to collect to add the box to the shelf or anything like that, as I usually just take the top art of the box and turn most of them into posters myself. And of course, lastly, it needs a lot of space to build it. So it's not like you're just going to be able to sit out on one little desk and put this guy together without having a lot of frustration over literally sitting through pages and pages of runners to find the right pieces. Okay, so to wrap up, so it's not necessarily as good as a Bandai kit, okay? But the price does make this an approachable PG kit for builders who are ready to step up their Gunpla building without paying $300 to $700. I mean, not everyone has that kind of money to shell out on a hobby, okay? However, this would make a really cool kit for someone who is building Gunpla or you know who is into Gunpla and maybe it's their birthday or something, you want to give them something really nice and expensive, this could be a cool kit to pick up for them that just doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And of course, it allows them to have the experience of building a PG kit for not that PG price. Pro builders may have some problems with the overall quality of some of the plastic, but I still believe it's an excellent kit to add to your collection, especially if you're a fan of the Gundam Astray. Thank you for checking out this review of the PG Gundam Astray Nielsen kit. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'm definitely curious how you guys feel about this kit in particular. Of course, if you found this video informative, please drop a like. It would really help out the channel. It's a quick click for you, but it really does help me out. And of course, if you want some more Gunpla content, I'll drop a video right here for you.